Hey guys, Mikey here. Welcome back to the channel. We have really, really special day today. We are on Honda Open Days today. So uh, we are going to test ride three different Hondas today. Uh, we'll get to them later on, of course. But uh, first of all, I have to uh, sign myself up and then uh, I have to give myself to the suit. So uh, I'll talk to you later, but stick around. We have three very special, special bikes for today. And of course, uh, subscribe, hit the like button and comment down below. We're gonna have really, really a lot of uh, content today. So uh, keep that in mind. So guys, I'm back in my suit, uh, finally done. So the bikes just came in here, so uh, we'll take a really, really quick look at them. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. For you who are following this, let's say, three-part season, we are on Honda test days and we are on our last bike for today test ride. We are sitting on NC750X, which is the new one for this year. I'm going to tell you something about it and I'm going to test ride it, how it feels. And uh, you will understand right away why I chose this motorcycle for the test ride. So let me just get away from this intersection. We are on the way, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back on the seat of Honda. Uh, another intersection as usual. They're nicely blocking the way. This little motorcycle fits me like a glove. It's exactly what I remember. Do you know what I mean by this? I mean that I used to ride one of these NC uh, 750s and it was uh, quite a long time ago when I was in uh, motorcycle school. I was doing, yes exactly my friends, uh, you are right, I was doing my motorcycle license school, or let's say driving school for the license for the motorcycle, like whatever, but I was doing my license on one of the C one of the NC 750s I believe he is freezing and I have uh, not really a lot of space to to try it on but never mind we'll have another chance I guess I believe let's go from rain to standard Come on boy, come on boy! Well, we don't have much uh, luck with the guy in front of us. He will not be running this really hard, I guess. Anyway, NC750X. 
this is uh, this is kind of a step up from NC 750S, which is a sport bike, and this is more more of a tourer. So this is uh, supposed to be a uh, light, nimble, small, but very practical way of traveling far, far, far away. Uh, you have multiple choices to fit this motorcycle with, a, I guess it's an adventure package and tour package and I don't know, uh, I guess there is one more. And uh, you have a possibility to, to tour on this. And I, and I fully understand why. This is probably one of the most comfortable sitting positions that I have ever been in, honestly. So I, I, I'm totally digging this. There is a really tight space in here for my legs, so I'm, I'm really comfortable with the place for my legs. So as I was saying, I'm, I'm totally digging this comfortable position. I'm, I'm just fitting right in, honestly. I like how how straight I'm sitting. I, I'm feel my my butt is feeling really comfortable at this point. So uh, I would say much better than the NC1100. I guess I don't know why, but just feeling more comfortable. I guess um, I'm 182 centimeters tall, and the seat is 800 millimeters tall. So no problem to flat foot. This is one of the lowest uh, seats which I've been on today. So there is no problem at all. Uh, you don't have many uh, many modes or many many choices of setup. I would say. We have um, basic three modes and one user mode for the for the mapping. Uh, that means we have uh, rain, standard, and sport, and one user. Uh, you have here selection, so you can switch from one to another. And uh, for the uh, DCT, this is actually again DCT motorcycle today. For uh, DCT stands for dual clutch transmission, so we are on automatic transmission. Uh, and we don't have a clutch, obviously. We have just those two buttons like uh, neutral and drive. Uh, this motorcycle doesn't have uh, uh, sport mode, uh, let's say in means of uh, transmission reaction. Uh, I was told it is connected through the mapping. So once you go to sport mode, you actually are changing the uh, reaction of transmission itself. On the previous model, on NC1100, uh, you had possibility to change also the mapping on the motorcycle and also the reaction of the transmission. So uh, this is more basic, I'd say, and uh, you don't have so many choices to choose from. But still, you have four different maps. Going okay. This is no super sport, but yeah, really insignificant, <laughs> really insignificant acceleration. It's there, but it's kind of not. Speaking of the acceleration and the and the motorcycle itself, this motorcycle has twin twin cylinder engine underneath this old fancy fairing uh, it's a liquid cool engine as, a, as a, most of them uh, this is 745 cc engine uh, which has 43 yeah you you are you are hearing correctly 43.1 I think uh, kilowatts so that's not a lot of power and uh, 69 newton meters so that's not a lot of torque either but uh, thinking about it as a, as a kind of like middle class middle weight class and middle power wise class for the touring motorcycle it's uh it's it's pretty okay you know i was doing a motorcycle license on this and i have a, and i never complain but at the beginning when even uh, eight horsepower for you is pretty much more than a motor, uh, pretty much more than a bicycle. 
you are kind of like, yeah, that's pretty fast. And then you sit on a CB1000 and you are just afraid to, to, to go full throttle. So uh, here is no problem to go full throttle. You have possibilities to change four different things in the user setup. You have power, you have engine braking, you have traction control and that reaction of the transmission. So once you go all the way, all the way down to user, you can see blinking those four like a visual aids and you have power, engine braking, traction control and drive. As on previous models with DCT, you can uh, you can shift by yourself. You have little minus and here and little plus on the other side, so you can go from uh, automatic to let's say semi-automatic. So you can go to RM and you can shift. So second, third, fourth, fourth, and it will just argue with you. So that's really nice, you know. Why not? This uh, display, one, you know, as, as far as we are looking on it, because of the uh, change settings, it's not cut, cutting edge technology, you know. But uh, it's still still good enough. You have everything what you need. You have a trip. You have a fuel consumption. You have a mode which you are in. You have. Uh, gear indicator which is really good and you have fuel uh, fuel gauge with a time and obviously a speed uh, what else do you need right so more the information on the dash the more you are like uh, distracted yeah well there is not much we can do about the power delivery. The guy in the front of us is gonna ruin our day, but let's just get on with it. Dash is pretty big. It, it might seem small on video, but honestly, it's pretty okay. I don't see any, any problem with it. Uh, I kind of feel that the dash is uh it's there is not not a problem with the how big the dash is but all the black lines and numbers kind of like blur together like sometimes when it's like 101 it's gonna look like a line and it kind of looks different and you are looking like what the number is and then you realize it's a hundred and you know I, I, don't, I don't know but it seems a little messy it's like too much things on the one on the one screen like something is big something is small like I get it like it's a it's about the priority but yeah it's 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 it might be confusing at, at, at first but I guess you'll get used to it okay you'll get used to it and it's it, then it's totally fine this is what you can do on the tour of course you have HISS which is Honda ignition security system so that's pretty much uh, standard equipment other than that you have uh, Nissan braking system which is interesting if you take a look at NC750X which is motorcycle which I'm sitting on you'll notice at the front that you have uh, actually one braking disc which is as far as I remember it's a uh, 320 millimeters and you have uh, a one braking caliper so you don't have that usual two calipers two dick setup you have just hello so you have just the uh, one caliper one this setup which is kind of strange to me because you have this tour bike which is uh it's not the lightest it's not the heaviest you know it's a uh, since we are talking about weight it's a uh, 214 kilograms for the manual and 224 for dct which is like uh you know it's not the lightest but it's not the heaviest one when you imagine 224 kilograms and then you imagine those 43 uh, kilowatts 
Well, not a lot of magic happening. This ride will be killing me behind this guy. Jeez. Guys, we are testing also new Shima gloves, racing RS2 gloves, which are specially, specially made for racing. So we are giving it a try. Let's go for the sport mode. Not bad, not bad. On the sport mode, you obviously see that it's keeping the rep very, very specifically high. We are on the third gear and it, we were on second up to that hill, which previously, I guess on rain mode, we would be like fourth, fifth gear, which is like um, uh, not, not really good. But we'll keep it in a sport mode because we have end of the village. So I'll give you guys a little bit of run from like 40 kph well it's there like it's not it's not like lightning fast but you cannot complain you will overtake uh, any car I guess with a no problems unless it's like uphill and you are like over overtaking six cars in a row but it's not bad you know it's a uh, it's it's no magic in here you have to understand that this 745 cc engine with 43 kilowatt and 69 newton meters it's it's no uh, 1000 cc super sport okay so uh you have to just understand that and and once you understand and you you know the purpose of this bike you will not be like uh expecting too much but still it's a it's a twin so it still has that low range to mid range power which is uh, not terrible which is not terrible at all it's kind of jumping all over the place it's really light i i gotta say and uh one of the reasons which is kind of like a light for the feeling it's not light I, as i told you it's 224 kilograms but regarding the feeling it's kind of like a low heavy so so up top it's kind of flickable and really light but down low when you once you stop you can feel the weight and that is one of the reasons for this is that actually this what you can see this is not a gas tank okay there's a really interesting thing about this nc750x that this is not a fuel tank i'm actually sitting on a fuel tank once we stop i'm gonna show you like i'll pull i'll pull out the key and i'll show you this is actually a storage storage place okay this is storage storage box and if you want to fill in the bike actually the the cap the the fuel gas tank cap is behind me under the under the seat for the passenger which is which is kind of cool and interesting and you will said you will um, those those shifts are not smooth man not smooth and uh you will see that actually though that the storage the storage uh space in here it's pretty good and uh, and big enough for the helmet so once you go somewhere shopping and doing i don't know the traveling and you just want to hang out on a gas station and ju you just want to go in some uh in into some mall you don't have to carry your motorcycle helmet because you can with no problem fit it here that means you don't have to have any additional boxes with you to fit the helmet in or you don't have to have a lock for your helmet to just keep it hanging uh, from the frame so this is really cool and I really like it at the beginning I didn't even know where is actually the fuel cap but eventually I figured it out because you know you have little symbols in here like how to open the storage box and how to open the fuel cap and as I was saying there is fuel tank which is underneath you and it has a 14.1 liters 
and interesting thing and and that's one of the big advantages of this motorcycle with that low power and that uh, kind of like a middle class twin uh, cylinder engine is the fuel consumption you have 3.5 average 3.5 liter per uh, per 100 kilometers which is which is awesome we've been on that nt nt 1100 that was like five liters or something this is like three and a half you can probably do three yeah not bad not bad It was that was pretty pretty big hit on that on that bump, so that kind of really elegantly puts me on a topic of suspension. So uh, for the first time, you have settable uh, rebound in the rear shock, as far as I remember, and you have uh, front forks upside. Uh, they are not actually upside down, which is interesting thing. They are not upside down forks. They are classic forks and uh you have 41 millimeter travel if i remember correctly and they are not settable so those are two big downsides for me uh when i first uh, take a look at this motorcycle and that's uh front suspension so front forks not being sure might be sure i'm not really sure at this point but they are not upside down forks which i would expect to be uh, for this kind of class of motorcycle. I know it's still kind of like low-cost tour Because if you want a high cost you would go for NT or Africa or something like that So yeah, it's kind of still a, a, a on budget bike. Let's say travel and you're on a budget and that one one front brake caliper with a one brake disc that's actually shocking to me i wouldn't expect with a motorcycle this heavy and motorcycle with that kind of a cc engine to have one caliper front brake that kind of like a it, can, it kind of doesn't make sense i know it's not made for track it's not made for real sporty ride when you are kind of like uh, beating up the front brakes but still, if we are doing like uh, thousands of kilometers or days or hours, uh, you will be using those brakes. So still, it's a, it's a big surprise for me. I don't have I don't really have any special issues with the DCT however those downshifts uh, I was expecting to be smoother but upshifts are pretty cool and they are pretty okay uh, in this sport mode uh, it's keeping it really high I know it's a sport mode but it's keeping it pretty high so it's doing its thing I would say so it's doing what you need it to do so let's keep back let's keep back to standard mode so we'll have a little bit more relaxed ride it will be not that jerky so also that reaction from the throttle will be a little bit changed which is more ideal for like uh traveling purposes of course so at this point i'm not really racing anyone and you wouldn't be racing anyone on this thing that's i gotta tell you in front because this is not a motorcycle to be racing on guys i see you i see you hiding behind the, the behind that counter now nah, i'm telling you this is this ain't any sport bike man it it it, it can have a sport mode but <laughs> you know why not put it there it's like it's cool so guys as i promised NC750 The look of it 
I'm like I am liking the look. It's it's it looks really modern. It's not the prettiest thing I saw. <laughs> but it's not bad either. It's pretty basic with some modern edges. But I'm digging the red. You cannot guess why, right? <laughs> so the red, red motorcycle at the end. It's a, it's a good choice. It's a good choice. So guys, unfortunately my battery is dying on me. So I'll do my best to cover most of it at this point. So what are the differences between 750S and 750X? That's probably one of the questions you would ask naturally. So as far as I uh, searched and I, as far as I found out, the X is more touring bike. The S is kind of like a basic, more basic uh, street sport bike, I guess. Honda is saying that, not not me. And X is uh, has more power. That's a really important thing. Has more power, and it's lighter, uh, and it has a different kind of a fairing, different different uh, cuts, cuts and different edges and different uh, pieces of the plastic. So it looks a little bit more uh, modern. The DCT is pretty much the the new thing for this uh, for this NC. 750 So what am I saying about the motorcycle? Is it what I remember? Yeah, the basics are still there, you know, it's really comfortable. It's very flexible It's a it's a nice uh, small steel middle class motorcycle and I'm digging the sitting position as I was saying This is the most comfortable sitting position. I had all day and uh, if we are looking for not the drastically uh, powerful, not cutting edge technology, uh, if we are looking like if we are looking for traveling on a budget, I'd say, but still on a brand new motorcycle, this is really accessible and cheap way how to do that. And uh, I'm giving it really like a thumbs up. Uh, couple of people that are like, uh, nah, we are going to left, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm afraid uh, you would go the wrong way, but yeah, whatever. So yeah, giving it a thumbs up.